Hi students, today we are going to learn the Spanish alphabet. We are going to cover basically vowels and also consonants. I believe it is the foundation of Spanish. You are going to learn how to spell in the end. That's why we have to learn in detail how do we pronounce each of those letters in the alphabet. Also, we are going to see what vowels are strong, what vowels are weak, why? Because this has to do a lot with accents in the future. So let's start. Before we start, the first thing that we have to know is that in sentences that are questions, we have to put the question mark in the beginning and in the end of that phrase or sentence. Mm, very, very important. And you will start learning that since, like we are going to start with greetings and farewells. And you will notice that in the beginning and in the end, you will find the, those question words. And you, and you can see an example here. ¿Cómo te llamas? What is your name? In English, of course, we put it in the end. But in Spanish, we put it in the beginning and in the end, inverted, one different from the other one, okay? The same thing with exclamation marks, we put it in the beginning and we put it in the end. Like, auxilio, see? When we exclamate or we express ourselves, see? We say, auxilio, help. Ah, ah, of course, we always put it in the beginning and in the end. And in English, we put it in the end only. Accents, we call them in Spanish acentos or tildes or tilde, acento or tilde. And uh, they go above vowels only, not consonants. If you are planning uh, to write, uh, we are going to start using those accents, those question marks, etc., etc. So I will give you the characters or how to do it is basically go to Word, go to Insert Symbol, and you will find those accents. But for reference, I will give you accent of A. C of E, I, O, and U. Also, ñ, question marks, and exclamation marks. So you can have that reference. Also, I will try to put a document explaining more about characters and how can you do that in your, in your computer, etc. I will try to put it in Canvas. So let's continue. Okay, so the Spanish vowels are five. We call them vocales, vowels. Vocales in Espanol, Spanish vowels, okay? And those vowels are A, E, I, O, and O. Generally to my students, I say to them, please pronounce after me in a short way as practiced two times. A, A, E, E, I, I, O, O, U, U. Again, A, A, E, E, I, I, O, O, U, U. Why? Because generally in English, you have those rounded vowels. Like ah, uh, we say hey. So we say them round and long. Here, no. What you see is what you get. So if we say it short two times, now you can say it one time short. So we say ah, uh, e, i, o, and o. Now here, we have three vowels. We call them the strong vowels or 
vocales fuertes. They are strong and open. Because we say a, e, o. When you do the sound, you do it strong. We call them strong. And also they are more open. That means that when we produce the sound, our mouth in the inside is more open than the weak ones that I'm going to show you. Now here we have e, u. We call them weak vowels. In Spanish, vocales débiles. When you, print, when you produce that sound, notice, just do it at home, practice. Then when you say e, u, the maxillar, your mouth from the inside goes like this. It's not the same as a, e, o, u. So that's why we call them weak bugs. And they are also named as closed vowels because our mouth closes in a way to produce the sound. The importance of being a vowel weak or strong is that when we start basically reading uh, or doing syllables or breaking the syllables, we have vowels. And sometimes we have those choices. Where do we have that emphasis? Of course, if we have two vowels together and we have a weak one and you have a strong one and you already know who is who or what, what is what, you will give that emphasis to the strong vowel. And, and believe it or not, this is the foundation of all those syllables, um, you know, that emphasis, that, those accents that we are going to see later on. That's why I put this visual of the boy producing sounds because sounds are essential in our pronunciation. That's why we say that Spanish has a rhythm, of course it has a rhythm, and it has that pronunciation of the Romance languages. Of course, we are romantic. Mm -hmm. and, and when you hear Spanish or people talk in Spanish, if you hear them, they are more strong, they emphasize more, they have those accents because we are a strong language. If I compare it with English, English is soft most of the time. Spanish is strong in the accent. But of course, if we give example like, yo te amo, hmm? versus, see, that, and we have that emphatic way to express ourselves, even in music. Mm -hmm. Again, we have, generally we associate strong with weak, fuertes, débiles. Also, we associate open and closed. Vowels, they have those characteristics. Okay? Like a, fuerte, abierta, okay? Versus u, weak, u, and closed. Okay, that's why I gave you that visual, uh, another visual, where you can see that pattern inside our mouths, when inside our mouths or uh, with those lips, where you see the A, the A, O open, A, more open, A, O, same level, but open, and then we see in the last, um, in the last, in the la on the top, you see uh, the E and the 
Ooh, that we barely open our mouths. See? I want you to see this because it's that step that we have to take to know why do we pronounce those vowels, in what way do we pronounce those vowels to communicate. Okay. Now, let us start with the first consonant. The first consonant, and pay attention on this because you will have that basically alphabet quiz, where this lecture plays a great importance to know what in the quiz they are asking. And uh, we can say, oh, I know the alphabet, but no, you don't know it like Lupita teaches the alphabet. That means that we go into that uh, field a little bit of linguistics. linguistics. What is linguistics? The study of language. Again, what is linguistics? The study of language. Now, under, under linguistics, we have many fields, but one of the most important ones are phonetics and phonemics. Why? Because in those fields, we learn how to pronounce, how to make certain positions, how to, to produce those sounds, those consonants, and also how do we produce the sound. Of course, this is not a linguistics class, so I'm just going to teach you maybe three, four, five uh, consonant, consonants that basically um, it's understandable to know how do we produce them. What is the difference between some of those that are similar in sound? And also if we have that uh, difference between them, even though we hear them the same. In this case, we have B. That's the official name of the consonant means that when, when, when we produce that sound or that consonant, we make a friction between both of our lips by labial, b -b 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 -b. see? So don't forget, consonant B, by labial, official name is B, B, E, B, Spanish, B, A. And how do we combine it with our vowel? So we say ba, be, bi, bo, him, bu. Again, ba, be, bi, bo, bu. You can do a double also. You can so you can get that hang of it that it's precise. Ba ba, be be, bi bi, bo bo, and bu bu. Practice it. Then we have the image, is a donkey, of course. In Spanish, we call it burro, with a B, con la B, bilabial, burro, okay? Muy bien. How do we spell that word burro? B, U, R, O. Our next consonant is C. And I always tell my students that that C has a double personality. Why? Because depending on the vowel next to it, we pronounce it in a different way. In this case, if it's a C in front, in frente of an A, O, or U, or A, O, U, the consonant sound will be k, k. In, in generally when it's phonetically, when we transcribe that, it will be brackets, k, like a K, and then we close the bracket. And you can see it in a dictionary. Whatever dictionary, generally, like the Webster's diction, dictionary, you can see the phonetic symbols in the beginning of after each word. So it will be ga, go, and go, okay? Like, um, for example, we can say Catalina, like coco, coconut, coco, 
¿sí? How do we spell it? Deletrear. ¿Cómo lo deletreo? Es, es C O C O. Official name C. Official name again C. Like I told you in my previous slide, C has two personalities. I always say to my students two personalities because it behaves differently depending on the vowel next to it. In this case, we have A and E. And when we put it before it, it converts into a S. So we say C, C. Again, C, C. Like the name of Cecilia. Again, the official name of uh, C is C. No? Bien. So that's C, the official name in Spanish is C. Che is formed, the sound of Che is formed to, with two letters, see? And, and we pronounce it Cha, Che, Chi, Cho, and Chu. Like uh, the English word challenge, that cha, 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 that's your sound. So the official name for this combined consonant is a uh, che. Cha, che, chi, cho, chu. Like football. Like muchacho. Okay. This consonant, I like it because it's very interesting. Uh, we call it ve. That's the official name. Ve. But uh, we call it Phonetically, it's an interdental consonant. Why is it an interdental consonant? Because when we pronounce it, our tongue, our, our tongue or the tongue is in the middle of both of our teeth. See? So we say ve, do. Like in, in English, we have day with D. If you notice, you just pronounce day in English. You will see the tip of that tongue on top of the alveolar, alveolar ridge behind your teeth. So we say day. You will not see the tongue. But if we translate that word day to Spanish and we say via, see how am I pronouncing that word? Via, I'm putting the tongue in the middle of the teeth, the opposite of English. So I say via, that's why we call it interdental. Via, like thumb, we say, we say it in, in, in Spanish, dedo, again, dedo, muy interesante. The letter F, F is our next letter consonant, F. Here, we call that consonant labiodental. This consonant is labiodental because to produce the sound, we use the teeth and the lip, labial and then dental, okay? Again, if we see the visual, you will see that it's fo go, fo go. See, a bulb of light, we call it fo go. See, fo go. And the name is e fe. If we pronounce it with the vowels, fa fe fi fo fu. Again, fa fe fi fo. Another interesting consonant that has two personalities like C. This one we call it G. G is the official name. See? But it has two depending of what do we have after it. Ejemplo. 
Daikato, sí. If we remember in English, goat, that animal goat in the ranch, you know, you you can hear and you can pronounce that sound g g g of goat. And if we put it in front of those vowels, we say ga ge gi go go again ga ge gi go go. But be very careful. To pronounce that sound of g, you say ga, you say ge, but when we say ge, you have to put a u. It's like a symbol telling you that you have to put the, you have to do that sound. But the a and the e, we need a u in the middle. So we say g u e and g u i. So we say ga, and then we say ge with a u, gi with a u. And then we leave it alone. See, we say G-O and G-O, like go, go. So we say ga, ge, gi, go, go. Don't forget the sound is of the one that you have in goat. Okay? Bien. Now, um, when we do the combination of G-U-E and G-U-I with she, something occurs. Or we say ge gi or if for some reason we see two dots on the top of that U, especially when it's a combination of ge gi the two dots, we call them vieresis. Again, Vieresis. And that means, if you see it on top of a U, that you have to pronounce that U. See? This occurs only with gegi that turns into gue and gui. Again, gue and gui. With, uh, for example, we have our visual that it's a penguin. We say pinguino. Why? Because we have those dieresis at the top. If we didn't have it for whatever reason, it would be pinguino and it doesn't exist. So in the alphabet, in the dictionary, if you see that U is because you have to pronounce the U. Okay? Yeah. Now, the other sound that the K has uh, basically is like uh, like the J, see? K, he, like the name, K. So we say K, he. When you do not see it with a U, you have to do that sound of H or house. I'm doing exaggerating. I'm exaggerating with a house so you can hear the, the sound in Spanish. So it will be he and he like the word like gem we say shema again gem shema h compañeros see h it's the official name of h in spanish you just ignore it it doesn't have a sound so when you see it in front of a, a, e, o, u, it's like that, a, a, e, o, u, because you will ignore it. It doesn't have a sound. So uh, I know you are used to English, so every time you see it, you will do the, you want to do the sound of house. No, 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 no. In Spanish, if you see that H, you ignore it, see? Remember that H has a CH, but that's different. If you see if you see that combination of CH, then you see the cha cha chi cho chu. But in this case, ignore it. Like hormiga ant, we spell it hormiga, and it has an H in the beginning. We ignore it. We you just pronounce the O. J, easy. 
in front of each of those vowels, you just say ja, he, he, ho, 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 again. Ja, he, he, ho, ho, like house, okay? But a little bit stronger. And uh, one of the words or visuals that I have here, we call it jitomate, or like a tomato, you call it jitomate. Of course, we say it also as tomate, but we can also say jitomate, jitomate. We have foreign consonants. In Spanish, son consonantes that we consider extranjeras, que, con, que se consideran extranjeras. And let's see which are the foreign consonants. One of them is ka. See? Ka is a foreign consonant that you have it also in English, k. And it's the same sound as English. So we say ka, ke, ki, ko, and ko. And we consider it a foreign consonant. Another one is doble u. Also, we say doble v. So there's two ways to say the official name. Doble u, double u, or we can say doble v, double v. Okay? Muy bien. So we say wa, we, we, wo, wo. And basically, we have to memorize those words because we don't have a lot of them. One of them is whiskey, like in English, whiskey. Also, if we know a name, even though it's in English, like Washington, of course, it's wa. Yeah? So remember, it will be wa, we, we, wo, wo. Okay? Yeah. So this is not a foreign Let's continue with the rest of them. Remember that we have two of them only. The um, K and doble U. But here, L is the same as English. So let's go fast. If it's L, like limousine, limousina, L, official name, la, le, li, lo, lo. AJ is not a foreign consonant. Let's continue with the rest of the alphabet. So AJ is double L, and uh, basically we don't do not pronounce it as English. Basically we pronounce it like uh, the one that we have in the end of the alphabet, like JoJo. No, so we say here we have the visual Juvia, rain, Juvia, and we pronounce it Ja, J, G, Jo, Ju, AJ. Okay, Juvia. Yeah. Consonants that are nasal. We have three consonants that are nasal. The first one is M. Next one is N. And the next one is Ñ. M. 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 Also, because when we produce that sound M, like English, it's, uh, we know it's uh, nasal because where we put that, where it travels that flow of air and behind the nose, but it's also a consonant that it's bilabial. Why? Because we say mama, mama, ma, me, mi, mo, and mo. See, it's bilabial. Let's continue with the next one. Next one is N, N, like na, ne, ni, no, nu. Like naranja, orange, naranja. It's nasal, of course. Next. This last one that it's nasal also, it's Ñ. This consonant, we don't have it in this English alphabet. But you have it in sound, especially in that word where we pronounce it. It's onion, onion in English. But in Spanish, we have that sound in the alphabet and we say ña, ñe, 
ni, ño, and ñu. Remember, this is a nasal consonant. Ñ. This is the same as English. Pa, pe, pi, po, pu. Again, it's a bilabial consonant. Why? Because we produce the sound with the two lips. Friction, no? Between those two lips. Pa, pe, pi, po, pu. The official name is pe. Pe. The Q, it's a peculiar uh, consonant because we have to use it with a U. And it has to be only with two vowels. So we can say que or qui, and it has to have that U in the middle. If, if not, we cannot use it. Like the word que so. So again, the name of, official name in Spanish is cu, cu. But we can only use it with A and E and in the U in the middle. See, in between that Q and those vowels. This is uh, that consonant that everyone has trouble with, especially in pronunciation. Because we can, in, in this case, we have a simple one. That's one R. And we call it R. Like the word in English, ladder, r, r, ladder, that's the single pronunciation of one only. Like we have in the visual, corazón, corazón, and we say ra, re, ri, ro, and ru. And it, the official name is ere, like ladder, ere. Now we have the double R. We call it R, the roll one that goes round, round, round. See? R, okay? Ra, re, ri, ro, and ru. Like the visual, P, ro. And the official name, R. Cuando la R se convierte in R. When the single R converts into a double R. So we have two rules. Uh, when we have the single R in a beginning of a word or the end of a word, it becomes double. For example, we have Ramiro. Ramiro. It's a single one, but it, because it's in the beginning of the word, we pronounce it as double. Also the other one, cantar, it's in the end. But because if it's in the end, we have to put that single R. That's the first rule. Second rule, when you see that single R in front of a consonant or after a consonant, we have to turn it, we have to pronounce it as double, even though it's single. For example, when we say, Erma, no. You can see the single in front of the M, it becomes double. Also, in redo, you see the, the single R after that N, it becomes double. So don't forget, beginning and end of a word, pronounce it as double. In front or after a consonant, it becomes doubled. The last rule is that uh, we say entre vocales lo que ves eso es. That means that uh, between vowels, what you see is what you get. If you see a single, it's single. If you see a double, it's double. See, I will give you one, one, uh, you, you will have many examples here. But if I say to you, um, Mario, a name, Mario. Like Mario. Can you see that, that it has two vowels, but we, we see a single one in the in, in, in the middle. So we respect that single R and we pronounce it as it. Mario. Mario. We have another one, like if it's between vowels like uh, 
¿sí? Between vowels, if you see a double, you pronounce it R. But if it's a single one, like in the last of that word, then we say R and then ro. ¿sí? So we respect that. Like English is the same thing. S, 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 like English, the same thing. Te, ta, te, ti, to, to. Official name, te. See? Te. Like television. Television. In this one, remember that I was talking about the bilabial B. Okay. Now here is not bilabial. Here is labial dental. Why? Because linguistically, there's a difference between the first one of the burro donkey and this one of a cow. We say vaca. Linguistically, it's labiodental because it has to be pronounced like that if we want to prove it linguistically. But in real life conversation, in real life conversation, we don't make that difference. That's why sometimes in writing they say some professors, all the professors, like my grandmother, they say, no, 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 no. When, they, when we wrote cow, we say vaca, labio dental, labio dental, labio, lip, dental, dental, labio dental. See? And, and when, we, when we wrote burro, donkey, our grandmother said, uh, bilabial, bilabial. Why? Because it has that, that B, that it's bilabial. Of course, nowadays we can say ve chiquita, the small one, ve grande, the big one. See, in the official name we call it uv, uv. This one is a special, a special consonant. It has a lot of history behind it. First of all, it has two sounds, and depending of how do we pronounce certain words, we have to memorize it like that. For example, let's start with those um, words that are pronounced as with a KS phonetically. If we say uh, Xochimilco, Xochimilco, we pronounce, even though it has an X in the beginning, we pronounce it as with two, with two consonants, like K and an S, but it's X. So we say Xochimilco. Also, also xylophone, see, xylophone, we say xylophono, xylophono, okay? Why? Because we pronounce it like that. But we have other ones, other words like uh, Javier, the name Javier, that uh, some people write it in the correct way with a J, that it's Javier. And uh, even though some papas like to uh, pronounce Javier, if it's an X, no, it's Javier, even though it has an X. But some papas, they say, no, it's not Javier, it's Xavier. So we have to memorize it. So remember, some of the words, we have to memorize it the way that we have to use it. See, we don't have too many words in it with X. And the official name is X, X. I always say to my students that X is a special consonant because uh, X has suffered changes through time. And one of the changes is that nowadays when we say Mexican, we say Mexicano, like Mexico. See, that's why I didn't pronounce it in my previous slide. Like Mexico is like a J, no? See, that sound. Also, when we say the adjective Mexicano, he's a Mexican, Mexicano with a J. But also we have, if, if with time, we have noticed that um, before, before it was um, Mexicano, Mexicano. So let's start first with Mexicano, but in the colonial days, instead of an X, they put a J. So it was pronounced Mexicano with a J. And before that, it was pronounced Mexicano, pronounced Mexicano. That's why we have Chicano, see? This me and then Chicano, see? 
See, that's why we have that Chicano, those roots. See, that's why I always say to my students, we have those historical changes in language also, in consonants. See, interesante, muy interesante. Y, -griega, y -griega, that's the name. And it's like the double L, the same sound. Maybe they will, we will have those differences, but I'm not going to get into those because that goes more into here, no? And believe it, phonetics and phonemics is not only one or two or three consonants. It's a lot of things that we have to learn. But here we say ja, che, chi, jo, ju. So it's not difficult. It's like jojo, jojo, y, jojo, jo, ja, che, ji, jo, and ju. Last consonant of the alphabet is Z. In Z, believe it or no, believe it or not, uh, it's pronounced like the S. Sa, se, si, so, so. Don't forget. Don't do it like English. There was a za, ze, zi, zo, zo, like if it was a B sound. No, it's not the B sound, believe it or not. The Z has that soft S when you see it, like zapato. Let's review. So basically, phonetically, that sound is used with three letters. And, and uh, we use it with uh, the C, C, and we use it with C and C only, C, E, and C, I. We use it with uh, all the vowels with an S, sa, C, C, so, su, and we also use it with all uh, the, all the vowels with Z, sa, se, si, so, su. This is just a review so you can remember and don't forget. So the sound um, of the X, of course, phonetically we use it as X, but it's not X. It's basically we are talking about the sound, that sound of see, of house, but strong. Remember that we use it with a J, like ha, he, he, ha, he, he, ho, hu, with J. We use it with X, see, ha, he, he, ho, hu, but we have to learn with which ones. Not all of them we use it with ha, he, he, ho, hu. Remember with Javier, sometimes we use it as Xavier, Oxilófono, Xochimilco. So, it changes. That's why we have to learn. When we learn certain words and, and it's with with X, learn it. If we if you use it with ha, he, he, ho, hu, that's good. And the last one is with he, he, and that's G, E, and G, I. Only we use the he and the he. This is just review, okay? More review. So now he, see? Remember that he has two personalities, depending on what vowel do we have. So we can use it ga, ge with a u, gi with a u, go, gu. But also we can use it as he, he, g, e, and g, i. Okay? So it's ga, ge, gi, go, gu, and he, he. Another consonant that has two personalities, it's se, depending on the vowels also. So it's kakoku with a o u, it's k, kakoku, and with e and i is se, si. So it has two ways to, that you can pronounce it. Now the sound phonetically that has the k s in brackets, that's See, it has two ways that you can pronounce it. Or oh, when you see it in a word, it can be pronounced in that way of the X. It can be an X. Remember that the X has two sounds. See, the J sound and the X. Like xylophono, xylophone, xylophono. Um, we can do it like that. Or also it can be reflected when you see two C's in Spanish. This is a new thing. For example, 
For example, when I say dictionary, diccionario, diccionario, it has two C's. But the first C on the left side, it will be the K. And the second C on the right side, it will be an S. So that's why we say diccionario, diccionario in Spanish. Now in Spanish, we have what we call double consonants. And we have four of them that are double. That means double the same consonant, but we have an extra one. And that's the double L that it's jajajajuju of rain, remember, juvia. We have a new one. This is, this is a new one that we have double N. And that's, we don't have too many, but uh, an example is like uh, innovated, innovation in English. We have in Spanish, innovación, and that N is double, it's NN. We don't have too many, but that's why I'm giving you one. Another one is that we have uh, the double C, the one that I just mentioned, that we say diccionario, and it's two Cs. And also we have the double R, that one that I explained, that we use it a lot, like perro, okay? So we have four consonants that are doubled. See? And that's the L, N, C, and R. Doubled. Some consonants are basically like a symbolism or ornament there that don't have any kind of sound. And that's the H. You already know that when you see H, you have to ignore it. Only if it's next to a C, no? And, and then we have what we call that U in the middle of the Q or Q that we use it. It doesn't have a sound, but it's there. Also, when we use the G, G, remember that it's ga, G, G, go, Gu. And the G, G, if we don't put, of course, dieresis uh, on the top, the two dots on the top, um, it, it doesn't have a sound. It's just G, G, see? to make that difference between not having it, having it and having it a diéresis also, no? So watch out with that. Things that you have to remember that are useful is that in English you have F, okay? And that sound F, we call it F. In, in Spanish we have a sound and it's F, like foco, fabio. But if you never, you never write it with double F in Spanish. You never write it with PH in Spanish. That's English. You bring the English that we don't use that kind of English when we start spelling or writing in Spanish. So never do that. That's a, um, an error. Okay, so don't do it. So don't forget that the Q, we use it with a U in the middle. This is just review. I'm just reviewing like that so you can remember those rules. You use the Q, Q, con, with, U only. And it's only with I and E. 